What's up everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to Shop 31. I'm Randall as always. I hope you're having a good day. It's almost Halloween and I got a delicious little video here for you guys. Um, we're going to talk about the 13 best slasher films. All right. Now this is a subjective list. This is my list, not necessarily yours. So instead of just being mean or hating on me, if you don't agree with my list, please by all means put your list in the uh, comments i want to see what you guys list and what ranks in your top like five and honestly i want your whole top 13 all right this is a big deep 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 genre okay so you can't please everybody and i, I already know there's gonna be stuff on here that makes people mad so um before we jump in <clears throat> excuse me please comment on the video like the video subscribe to the channel if you like the video that helps pump it out into the algorithm for us that really is important so please thumbs up our videos um and subscribe to the channel as we're trying to grow. I've got some goals I want to meet that I can, that'll help me increase the quality of our videos if I meet the goals. And uh, we can only get there if you subscribe. So please do so. I would really appreciate it. Either way, welcome to the show. Welcome to the channel. Come on, man. Let's be friends, man. Let's be friends. So, um, oh, one more thing. Thank you specifically to all my Patreon members out there. You guys are amazing. If you're interested in that, information is down below in the description. And we have a Patreon exclusive podcast now every couple of weeks called me and my final girl where my wife and i talk about horror movies that we've watched over the past couple of weeks from my personal collection only no streaming services uh because my wife is just now like in the last couple of months beginning to watch horror movies and so she's re uh we're, wa we're watching them for her first time and it's really great conversation so uh if you if you're interested at all if not no worries but if you are it's pretty fun so let's talk some slasher movies everyone okay you ready for this you ready for this I don't think you're ready for this. Disclaimer, all right? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Psycho, 86th in junction this list, man. <clears throat> They're not on here. Two movies that I love dearly, all right? Um, I don't feel like they qualify as slashers. That is a topic and a conversation for another video. If you would like me to make that video, I am more than happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments, all right? Um, so let's start off with number 13. It's a 1960s British, British, excuse me, psychological horror thriller film about a loner named Mark Lewis who works at a film studio during the day and at night he takes racy photographs of women. Also, he's making a documentary on fear, which involves recording the reactions of victims as he murders them. All right. This movie's called Peeping Tom. It's directed by Michael Powell. Uh... The main antagonist of the movie befriends Helen, the daughter of the family who lives in the apartment below his, and he tells her vaguely about the movie he's making. She sneaks into his apartment to check out what he's doing, and she's horrified by what's on the video, right? And she's even more horrified when she's caught red-handed doing this, all right? He catches her in the act, all right? Uh, the film's controversial subject matter and its extremely harsh reputation by critics had a severely negative impact on Powell's career as a director in the UK, all right? However, it attracted a cult following, of course it did, right? And in later years, it's been reevaluated, and it's now widely considered a masterpiece, even by me. I love this movie. Uh, and it's a uh, catalyst to slasher genre in general. This movie is one of the earliest slasher movies I can think of. 1960, I don't personally think there's one before this. Hell, I think this predates uh, Psycho, even if you want to put Psycho in the mix. But Peeping Tom is great, man. It's a very, very good movie. If you haven't seen it yet, please go check it out. Number 12, a movie that I had not had on my list, my list originally. Excuse me. I can't talk tonight. It's Just so you know, it's 2.28 a.m. And I'm doing this. I'm, I'm just trying. I can't wait to get this video done. I'm so excited about it. Um, number 12 is a, video, a movie that I didn't have on here to begin with. I have reevaluated my list a couple of times. Um... Uh, I had to put it on here. It gave me nightmares as a child. It's A Nightmare on Elm Street, directed by Wes Craven. Uh, several Midwestern teenagers fall prey to Freddy Krueger. All right, I think we're all familiar with him. A disfigured midnight mangler who preys on the teenagers in their dreams, which in turn kills them in real life, by the way. After investigating the phenomenon, Nancy begins to suspect that a dark secret kept by her and her friend's parents, okay, uh, may be the key to unraveling the mystery but can she and her boyfriend, Glenn, solve this puzzle before it's too late? I have no idea. I've ne oh, no, I do know. This is from 1984, folks. Spoiler alert. They do it. I mean, come on. There's like... F she's in like four of the movies. Nancy, by the way. 
Uh, not only did this one bring us one of the top three most iconic bad guys of all time in Robert England's Freddy Krueger, it also brought us one of the most awesome and prettiest final girls, in my opinion anyways, uh, Heather Langenkamp's Nancy. And it also brought us a very young, pretty pirate, Johnny Depp. Uh, that was Glenn, I believe, that's who his name. Anyhow, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of the OGs, man. This one I thought, I still think, it's it's head and shoulders above Halloween and Friday the 13th. In my opinion, I mean, Halloween I think is probably a better made film. But Nightmare on Elm Street is definitely scarier. But, uh, again, it's very subjective, alright? This is a complicated list, a complicated subject, and a complicated topic. Um... Speaking of complicated and divisive, let's go number 11, all right? Maniac, the remake. Ooh, dun dun dun. Uh, it was directed by Frank Calphone. Man, I can't pronounce that guy's name save my life, dude. But it's about a serial killer who's played by Elijah Wood that he removes his victim's scalps and he attaches them to mannequins in his like, mom's old retro vintage shop, all right? The reason I picked the remake over the original is because the remake is more palatable it is superior in every way the acting the writing the lighting the camera work the music the original is amazing i love that movie i don't know which one of these i personally like better but if i was to recommend them and put them on a list i think the remake is above the original number 10 the strangers directed by brian bertino Kristen, played by Liv Tyler, and James, played by Scott Speedman, are expecting a relaxing weekend at a family vacation home, but their stay turns out to be anything but peaceful. First, a mysterious and dangerous woman arrives at the door while James is out on an errand. When he returns, he accidentally kills his friend Mike, all right, mistaking him for an intruder. And then real danger shows up in the form of three masked torturers, leaving Kristen and James struggling for survival. Kind of a typical story, right? But it's done really well. Strangers is one of those ones that, like, if you don't like home invasion movies, this movie will scare the crap out of you. This was a good movie, though. I really, really, really enjoyed it. We've broken through the top ten. We're at number nine. It is. Oh, uh, it's another, probably, a not a divisive pick, but a divisive spot on the list. This is going to make some people mad. Halloween, 1978, directed by John Carpenter. On a cold Halloween night in 1963, six-year-old Michael Myers brutally murdered his 17-year-old sister Judith. He was sentenced and locked away for 15 years. But on October 30th, 1978, uh, while being transferred for a court date, a 21-year-old Michael Myers steals a car and escapes Smith's Grove. He returns to his quiet hometown of Haddonfield, Illinois, where he looks for his next victims. I shouldn't have to explain to you why Halloween's on this list, so I'm not going to explain to you why Halloween's on this list. It's freaking Halloween, man. Come on. Number eight, American Psycho, directed by Mary Heron. A lot of people don't know that a woman directed this movie. In New York City in 1987, a handsome young urban professional, Patrick Bateman, played by an amazing Christian Bale, lives a second life as a gruesome serial killer by night. The cast is filled by the detective Willem Dafoe, the fiancé Reese Witherspoon, the mistress Samantha Mathis, the co-worker Jared Leto, and the secretary Chloe Savini. This is a biting rye comedy examining the elements that make a man a monster. Dude, Christian Bale puts on some dad sneakers, runs through a hallway butt naked, and then drops a chainsaw on a woman. If you don't want to see naked Batman dropping chainsaws on women, well, I don't know why you're on this channel. I do. So that's why I picked American Psycho. And so should you. <laughs> number seven. Ooh, number seven. Oh, man. Hush, directed by Mike Flanagan. Oh, my goodness, dude. This is a perfect example of don't judge a book by its cover. I avoided this movie for a long time because the cover art looks so bad. Uh, but this one's about a deaf writer. All right, a female who retreated into the woods to live a solitary life, who uh, ends up fighting for her life in silence when a masked killer shows up at her window, unannounced, obviously. All right, um, shenanigans ensue. This movie is terrifying. Another home invasion movie. Um, home invasion slashers are some of my favorite, and they're scary as all get out. Um, 
if you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. I believe it's on Netflix. Uh, but when I watched it, I was completely flabbergasted at how good this movie is. It's scary, it's tense, it's done very, very well. I think you should go check it out. Number six, one of the more bleak movies on the list, Eden Lake, directed by James Watkins. It's got a uh, Magneto, Michael Fassbender in it, man. Um, a young couple on a romantic weekend break uh, weekend break, excuse me, at a remote lake house are terrorized by a group of vicious delinquents. This movie makes you mad in so many ways and so frequently that I've even met people that couldn't make it through the movie. I tell you what, it ends on a down note. All right, this is a fana. What was I gonna say here? Fantastic. That's what I was gonna say. Fantastic film. Uh, brutal, bloody, gory mean, violent. This movie is everything you want in a slasher movie and probably more. Um, they even set a little kid on fire in this movie. Spoiler alert. Sorry, I had to say that, man. It just, I mean, there's there's so much stuff in this movie that blows my mind. Eden Lake's another one that when I finally got it, I was so shocked at how good it was. Speaking of shock, number five, a movie called Inside, directed by uh, Alexandre Bustillo and Julien Mari. It is a French they call it, what is it, New French Extremity? That's what they call these movies? I don't really understand, I guess, I don't know, extreme French movies. A scissor-wielding psychopath terrorizes a pregnant widow on Christmas Eve. This one is amazing. It's grotesque, it's hard to watch, and at the same time, it's a must-see for horror fans, guys. Especially those that like gore and that uh, French Extremity thing. Um, this is one of the most insane and brutal movies that I've ever seen in my life. This movie's insane. It starts and it gets going. It does not slow down. It is, I don't know, man. This is a gruesome movie. It's not like uh, a Serbian film gruesome, but it's not far off, man. This is a hard watch. I will never get my wife to watch this movie, nor would I ask her to. It's just bad taste, man. But if you like super high gore, just really rough violence, go check this movie out. It's hard to watch, man. I think I don't even know if it's on Blu-ray. I know it's on DVD. Number four. Oh, man, it's gonna make people bad too. Hatchet, directed by Adam Green. When a group of tourists in a New Orleans haunted swamp tour find themselves stranded in the wilderness, their evening of fun and spooks turn into a horrific nightmare. All right. All I gotta say about this is Kane Hodder plays Victor Crowley, the main antagonist of this movie and series of movies, all right? I think that him in this movie is better than Jason in Friday the 13th personally um hatchet is the throwbackiest throwback it's like maybe like the it's it's up in the top five of like throwback horror movies man this movie is amazing if you like 80s camp slashers this is that done better all right it's campy it's aware of itself it knows what it's all about and it just goes hey you want a bunch of brutal murders here you go the plot who cares the acting's pretty solid the gore to special effects which are all practical Muy bueno. I'll take more of it, please. Um, number three. We're in the top three now, folks. Your Next, directed by Adam Wingard. The Davisons, an upper-class family, are extremely wealthy, all right? But they're also estranged. In an attempt to mend their broken family ties, Aubrey and Paul Davison decide to celebrate their wedding anniversary by inviting their four children to their uh, children's significant others. Oh, excuse me their four children and their significant others, man, I need to write this in bigger letters, uh, to their weekend estate. The celebration gets off to a rocky start, but when crossbow-wielding assailants and animal masks suddenly attack, the Davisons must pull together or they will die. This is a good movie. Again, home invasion movie. But this is a very uh, well-done movie on a budget, and this is another one that's just kind of... It's just above the others, man. It's above the rest. It does way better than the others. That's just, that's it. I, I don't know. There's movies out here that you guys are probably wondering where they're, my, you know, where they're out of my list. Uh, we're down to the last two. Anybody that knows me very well probably knows exactly which two movies are coming up next. Um, but your next is one that I really like. I think it, it is head and shoulders above most slashers. Number two, Scream, directed by Wes Craven. He's the only director to have two films on my list. Uh, it's the film that single-handedly resurrected the slasher film genre. Be that good or bad, that is a subjective question that everyone can decide for themselves. I am personally very happy that it was uh, a movie that came out and did this for us. Um, 
Wes Craven reinvented, reinvented, excuse me, and revitalized the slasher horror genre with this modern horror classic, which manages to be funny, clever, and scary. As a fright mask knife maniac stalks high school students in middle class suburbia, Craven was happy to provide us with both tension and self parody in this movie. All right, um, with just a freaking ever growing body count. All right, I mean it's still alive and well to this day. Scream Five's coming. Um, but in this movie, the victims aren't always the ones that you're going to expect. As we all know, with Drew, Mar Drew Barrymore's famous uh, opening scene, which in my personal opinion is the best opening scene in horror. I'm sorry for my manic, all kinds of crazy all over the place tonight. I'm very tired, but I'm excited to do this. I'm excited for Halloween. I'm excited for my stuff i got to do tomorrow for work. It's just, I'm in a good mood. I'm just happy. My apologies for the craziness. Uh, that being said, Scream is my favorite or my favorite A horror movie i don't know how to say it man i got two movies that i love dearly i can't decide which one i love the most scream has been on my, been on my list for my whole life so I, I guess i have to go scream that being said the number one best slasher film in my opinion terrifier directed by damien leone a maniacal clown terrorizes three young women and anyone else in his way on halloween night terrifier it is the best 80s horror movie that wasn't done in the 80s it's the best slasher movie, the best villain, because this is Michael Myers on crack. You don't know nothing about this dude, all right? They took what Michael Myers was doing, and they, they, they were like, oh, Rob Zombie, you're going to mess up Halloween? Cool, we'll give you guys something very similar to that, and we won't fuck with it. Excuse me, I was trying not to cuss, man. I'm so hype on Terrifier. I can't wait for Terrifier 2. Terrifier has the best villain, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Art the Clown is that dude. I know so many people that don't like this movie. Most of them aren't horror fans. But nonetheless, I don't understand it. And if you're a horror fan and you don't like Terrifier, I'd really like to know why. It's okay if you don't like it. I'm not going to hate on you, but I'd really, I am curious. Um, but yeah, that's my list. you want me to go through it one more time real quick? Let's do that. All right. The top 13 best slasher movies. 13, Peeping Tom. 12, A Nightmare on Elm Street 1. 11, Maniac, the remake. 10, The Strangers. 9, Halloween 1978, 8, American Psycho, 7, Hush, 6, Eden Lake, 5, Inside, 4, Hatchet, better than Friday the 13th, uh, 3, You're Next, 2, Ah, Scream, 1, Terrifier. Alright folks, thank you for watching the video, thank you for sticking around, I sincerely hope you like my list, I don't expect you to necessarily agree with all of it, so I'd like to know what you think. What are your lists? What's your top 13 slashers? What's your top 10, top 5? Whatever list you want to give me. Um, but uh, that's my list. Thank you for hanging out tonight. I very much appreciate it. It's almost Halloween, so please go out. Have a good time, but please remain respectful of others. Be safe out there, but uh, have a good time, everybody. Man, Happy Halloween. Uh, this is Shop 31. I'm Randall. I appreciate it, folks. We'll see you soon. Until next time. Peace.